Here is a cause of much discussion and stress. The fridge should not be in the sun. It's not. Well, this fridge I'm giving up on. I'm not using it anymore. The fridge has no sun on it. Um, the Only in the very early morning hours when the sun is filtering through the trees, there's a tiny bit on it. But after it passes these trees, right here, there's no sun in the fridge. So it's protected, it's shaded. And I paid attention to where I was putting it and I tried to find the best place for it. And if you look at my weather station, generally indoors is hotter longer than it is outdoors. The RV, if anybody that has camped in a camper or an RV in summer, I, I, I guarantee they won't be seeing anything about it because they'll know better but um, it is a oven inside an RV and it does not cool down oh that's terrible in there but anyway um, the fridge is safe was safe I'm not using it I'm done with it it isn't working so thank you all for your ideas and help and suggestions but that is a piece of garbage and I am not I lost all my food anyway I've lost uh, two sets of groceries in, in a week and a half time. When the RV fridge blew, I had just purchased groceries and I lost all that the next day. And then here, when this fridge blew, I had just purchased groceries the day before. I'm done. Until I build my tiny home, I'm not going to play around with, uh, with that. I like a nice cold drink now and then, so I'm going to maybe hook up something little. But uh, I'm done with cold foods for now. But yeah thanks for everybody for trying to help troubleshoot it but I think it's just a stupid design it just can't handle the heat and what do we got here look here oh they're so hot poor little things it is hot look at that they're getting fuzzy how many are there one two three I see three heads oops I'm looking and not trying on look at that painting poor little thing that Oh, that's an, super, super hot. They get no breeze. Poor little babies. I think there's four of them. I see one, two, three, four. Four babies. Four little babies that I can see. There's a lot of babies in that little nest. Where's mom? I know she's somewhere. I can hear her chirping. Poor little things. I wish I could do something for them. Look at them panting so bad. This metal is just a scorcher right now in this sun. I guess she knows what she's doing. wonder how they don't dehydrate. Sorry about the camera action. When I'm looking at the birds myself and not at the camera. Anyway, they're cute. They're going to be out of the nest soon. If they don't die from the heat. Well, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the off-grid project. And I just got home a few minutes ago. I have done nothing today but running the roads. But again, for good reason. I have my floorboards for my home. My roofing came in. So what I have here now is all the trim pieces and the roofing material for my roof for my tiny home. And this is cut to the right length. They're 11 foot long sheets which is going to be the single sloped roof on my tiny home. And there's the color. Now this is just a protective piece. I think they gave me one extra as a protective sheet which is perfect because I think 11 feet that'll be I think that'll work out for my chicken coop. Uh, it'll give me six foot wide by five and a half foot long roughly. Uh, not the largest but it'll definitely make a good egg battery box for my birds. So I'll take extra scraps of that and have myself a roof for my chicken coop matching my house. How cool is that? Now there is my floor. That is three-quarter inch tongue and groove plywood. 
Again, those pallets I picked up last week or two weeks ago are perfect. They're holding my stuff up. And I've got eight sheets. So two, four, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Eight sheets of three quarter inch tongue and groove. And I have all of the finishings and everything I need. Oh, slowly it's coming together. I've got three pound, five pound pack of self-tapping screws for the flooring and for whatever else I need. I got tan colored because the floor is going to be, this is going to be a green house. My tiny home is going to be all green and all natural through and through. So what I have here is shellac. Now shellac is, look, see the green happy tree? All natural finish, renewable resource. I did some studying, a lot of studying, about what is the best an all natural floor finish. And this is it. Shellac is a, it's made by insects and it's secreted on trees in India, if I remember right, as they're walking along the outside of the tree, sucking the tree sap. They secrete this hard coating and people come and scrape it off the tree into containers and then they melt it down and they've got shellac. A natural renewable resource. So I've got enough to cover my floor with a nice thick shellac coating. Two cans. And all my screws, as I said, the natural looking color. It's the best I can get for now. And more supplies for my roofing. These boxes here, including the colored screws for the roof. So now I just need good weather. It rained again today already. And it's supposed to rain again some more. Um, in about two hours, we're supposed to have some serious, serious heavy duty thunderstorms coming through. So while we were out today, I recorded some of these uh, tree benches that were, were down that somebody said, I don't know why a person would claim there was only twigs down over here uh, that wasn't here. But anyway, I, I, I recorded some massive tree branches, branches, trees. Trees were downed from the uh, storms we had this week. And a friend of mine called me the other day and said, I'm stuck, I'm, I'm trapped. There are trees down all over the roads and the fire department's out cutting them up and I can't get home. Everywhere I turn, I can't get home. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty severe storm. It took down trees. I was fortunate here that not too much happened in my meadow. Actually, I don't think anything happened in my meadow, which is good. But anyway, I'm gonna go inside and uh, refresh myself. Sorry, I can't say rehydrate anymore. It's a bad word. So I'm going to go refresh myself inside and uh, then I don't know if I have time to work on this frame. I want to finish this, but if it's going to rain in two hours, there's no point in sanding. So I think I'm sort of stuck as far as this right now. Although I, I am going to try to turn this over. So I'm going to go rest a little bit. And I am going to see if my, um, ugh, bugs are all over my face. I'm going to see if my garden tractor can pull this and see if I can somehow try to turn it around. It's going to be a challenge without, I don't have a wheel on the tongue, so I'm going to have to figure out on the, um, the jack, figure out something that can drag or pull along behind that. But, uh, I'll see if I can do that after my break. I'll give you a brief rundown of some of the things I do here at the off-grid project on an average day-to-day -day basis. I check my baby birds all the time, which we've seen today already, though. They're doing better now. It's cooler. I uh, am often in my garden, although it looks like a jungle, but I'm often weeding my garden. I work in the workshop on wheels from time to time. I had a lot of stuff in my car from the weekend. We had an outing on the weekend with the church, so I have all the tables and all the chairs and the grill and the charcoal and the lighter fluid and uh, all kinds of stuff. And the, the games, because I've got storage, so I've got all that. So I just finished unloading all that into the camper. I'm going to see if I can get this grass mowed today, because the jungle its going to rain again tonight, so... Right now it's still really humid, but it's not as bad as it was during the day. 
So I'm probably going to try to chop this down so it doesn't look too appetizing to the deer again. I was working on the chicken coop. I was checking. I've got a broody hen laying on eggs, which I think I forgot to tell you. My little egg layer stopped laying because I've got a broody hen laying on her eggs. She's got about a half a dozen or eight of them or so. And I'm not going to show you because I was reading online you're not supposed to disturb them. But there's a broody hen in there. The white one, believe it or not. The white one with, with, um, that never laid, she laid one egg ever, is the one that is nesting. How funny is that? So I've got the door cracked open here so that there's airflow during the hot heat of the day. And we'll see what happens. Um, it's been a week, roughly, a week or ten days. And she's been nesting in there. I think it's been about ten days, so another maybe ten days or less. I'll see if it's working or not. Had to work on the chicken watering system. It was dirty. Had to unplug that. And brought a couple buckets of water over here. So that's a big task all the time. I don't know where the water goes. These birds are really drinking a lot of water. I can't believe it. Now I'm uh, over here. I took the cat into town. I took baby cat for a ride. She is a cool cat. She's really cool. She rides like a dog, looks out the windows and people wave at us. It's really cool. But I'm working on this. I want to get this go-kart out of the way. And then I want to get the trailer moved. So I have this little thing. I went to Tractor Supply, looking around. Let's see if I can reach it here. I, I knew there would be something like this. I'm no, I knew I wasn't the first one to ever come up with this idea to move a trailer like this. And this is precisely what this is for. So I can set my trailer jack on this. And I tried to lift it today, so I know it's not too heavy. I know the trailer is not too heavy to move because I sort of could lift up the tongue a little bit. I didn't try to kill myself or hurt my back, but I could I could lift up the tongue a bit. I got it off the ground and set it back down. So I think my lawnmower will do this. So right now, I want to get this thing out of the way, which has been sitting here forever. And finally, finally, after all this time researching on line about tires and everything, I finally figured out what is the right tire size for that thing. Finally figured it out. So, hopefully I'm going to fix that now. Got my little generator. Which I'm going to fire up here in a minute. Little Harbor Freight generator. using it earlier so it's sort of warm.
tube because I couldn't get the metal um, rims, there's just a two piece rim and I couldn't get it in there because the tube was all in the way. So I had to put a little bit of air in to get it to go into the tire to make sure I don't put any stress on the tube anywhere when I put this together. these rim halves and let them dry because everybody everything's been sitting out here a while see the tube wants to push on that and it's an awkward setup but at least with some air in there I can get it worked around a little out of my way it's been here so long construction. Do them. 
So the moment we've all been waiting for, the final unveiling of the go-kart. It isn't uh, put together yet, I just got the wheels done. But I wanna get it out of the way. So I had to get a tire and move it. Finally. Finally. What is that up in the air for? Oh, the ground is that uneven. That's weird looking. I use that up in the air. It is that uneven. Wow. Well, it sure rolls smoothly enough. It needs some uh, needs some new bearings on the back wheels. They're really bad. Actually, it needs bearings everywhere. All the bearings are shot. So I think I don't want to go too far because it's going to rain. So I don't want to uncover this too much right now. Not yet. It's going to rain again tonight, and that's exactly why I'm working on this because I can't paint. So I figured I'd work on this a little bit. So there's the linkage. Let me go see if the carburetor I got is the right one for this. I unpackaged my carburetor and I eyed it up to make sure it's the right thing before I flip on the camera. This is the one my friend Paul from YouTube sent me. It's been a while since I had this. I've been looking forward to it. That tire is what held me off, or held me up. I don't like to start on one thing and then leave it and come back later and back and forth and back and forth. So I got the tire, as you saw. I got the carburetor, new gaskets. A few line and air hose. Go on. Oops. Get that screw in there. Okay. Uh oh. I'm missing the nuts for that. I have to find them. Had to hunt around for new nuts because when I had them over on the workbench, they must have fallen off and a magnet search in the leaves didn't help, so they're gone. So I got some new ones out of my workshop. I have to find the right player for that, a wrench for that. Be right back. The mosquitoes are out in force, so I won't be able to work much longer out here. A sitting target. Just want to put some gas in and see if I can give this a pull and see if it'll run. Ah, these gas cans in New York standards now is really stupid. It sprays up and outward at you. It's the new law. Ah, the bugs are bad now. All of a sudden, the bugs are out in force. I don't know why they would have a new law to put these new gas cans into effect. These nozzles that spray out all over the place. How is that beneficial? Oh yeah, I guess you spend more gas. Maybe the oil barons have uh, organized that. Use a lot more gas. I've got to figure a way to, to give that a pull. Let me screw something around here. 
I can't get the screws in the shroud on. The original owners couldn't either. It was, I see it's been riveted and patched and all kinds of junk. So I'm going to try using a electrical wire that's left over from my camper demolition to pull start this with. Now, is there an on off switch? Make sure there's no kill switch I'm missing here. Here we are, on off. Take all this stuff off, I guess, in case it wants to move. Hope it doesn't take off on me. <laughs> Funny thing, I found the two screws that went to this carburetor. After I put it on, I had them neatly set up under there. How funny is that? So I have them. <sighs> if you're ever missing a shroud cover like I am, a piece of wire or rope wrapped around a few times usually does the trick. Oops. Of course, Murphy's Law says, as I'm trying to demonstrate, I'm going to mess it up. Isn't that funny? Ah. Of course, the mosquitoes aren't helping by chewing on me as I try to do this. It's hard to have a steady hand when you're being eaten up. sound of that clutch. I know. Well, I got gas in it. Let's see what goes on here. I'm running out of daylight. I still want to mow the grass over here, but I want to get this thing going. Get it out of the way. Go! Come on! Whoops. On the carburetor too late. Idle screw adjustment. Back to the toolbox. Come on. That's too fast. I think I have to crank this up a minute. Again. Keep that from running away.
Well, it sure doesn't need a carb cleaning. That's one thing I can eliminate. Oh. Adjustments on here. No adjustments. So I'm going to change the oil. I didn't want to waste anything on an uh, on engine that wasn't going to be sure. And I'm going to change the oil, put this away for the night, and uh, tomorrow in the heat of the day maybe I can do some playing. Get some lube on the, uh, all the wheels, joints. I know I'm not safe from saying proper terms, of course. But Lube everything up. I'll have this thing running. I am not going to run it without changing that oil first. That I say, I promise right now. It didn't look clean. That's, that'll do in the morning. Time for cutting the lawn. Working late tonight. I got this heavy package in the mail from Amazon. It's easy to open because it's halfway opened. We have here. Uh, let's see who's in, who this is from. Uh, I hope I say this right. Colin, C O L I N, from South Australia, sent me some. Uh, Ortho Bug Be Gone. Insect killer for lawns. Kills a hundred different insects. Well, everybody kept saying I need to get it. I guess uh, I have it. Well, thank you. I hope I said your name right. Is that Colin? Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> Take free off-grid project soon, I hope. It's late, but I've already mowed all of this. I'm running like mad, I'm actually dripping. It's really humid. It's still quite humid. I mean, I guess it's fine when you're sitting still, but if you even walk or move, it's exhausting. I cut all this down. It was getting out of control. I've still got all this to do. A lot left here. Let me uh, set up my tripod and show you how fast I'm working. I am really running like a madman here trying to get this done before dark I've got to get this lawn finished before it gets dark out and this is how I work this is me just doing my average I mean so I can get more done in the day
Let me real quick show you something. If I put the camera away for the night, I got smart this time and I marked my rose bushes. All four of them took, they grow, they grew every four of them, every one of them. But I've got a problem here with my little fruit tree. My mulberry, something's on it. Something's eating it, so I'll have to check that later on. I'm gonna finish this lawn before it gets dark. It's supposed to rain at 10, so I gotta get this done. And then it'll start growing again. I got it. It's all done. Oh, that was a workout. It takes a while. I think it takes a good hour or so to push mow this whole yard. I still have to do it behind the workshop. But uh, I got the whole meadow. I did it under the fence line over here. I gotta work my way around by the blueberry bushes next time. And I uh, have to move these solar panels and trim around them. Around the fence lines here, the electric fence line. There's trees, I have actual trees growing. Which provides a lot more shade for the birds, by the way, during the daytime. Uh, just want to check the blueberries while I'm right here. No, they're still green. Oh no. No, look at that. Wait, is that a blueberry? They're so little. Oh look. Blueberries. Oh, they're ripe. Blueberries. Tiny, tiny, tiny blueberries. Oh, so little. It's loaded though. I'm gonna come out later tomorrow and get some. Look at how this is growing. Look at how high this is. I had to really mow it back now. Oh, there's a massive toad. Oh, this is growing. Now next year, all these grapevines, I wanna cultivate these grapevines in here. So, uh, Next year in the spring, I'm gonna watch out for these and trim around them and allow them to grow better so that they can really bear fruit for me. That's the wild grapes and they're healthy, really healthy, full of antioxidants. Oh, well, it's probably nine o'clock. See, the chickens now, they don't use the chicken coop. Actually, I think from what I've understood, broody hens won't allow chickens in the chicken coop. But um, they've been sleeping outside for a while at night, for quite a while, ever since they got a little bit bigger. They like to sleep outside, I think because it's warmer too, it's warmer out. But that's where they'll stay tonight. Rain or wind or storm or good weather, that's where they stay. So when I build my new chicken coop, I'm going to put a lot of roosting space in it, a lot of... Uh, boards. I've been studying online about chickens and chicken coop construction. So they'll have a really nice place soon, very soon. Look at this jungle. This is great for the birds. Look at that. Really nice. And they're obviously not uh, not uh, starving or they'd have that picked clean. So that's a good thing. And now, actually, I only feed them once a day. I, f I cut down the food by uh, a third of what I was giving them. And they're doing perfectly well. And they don't follow me around begging as bad anymore. They get their morning food, and then the rest of the day they're on their own. Because, seriously, that's a lot of food out here. That's a lot. Oh, she just found something. Or he. I don't know if that's a... Yep. Silky just found a, a bug. So anyway, that's it for tonight. I just shut off all AC power inside the uh, off-grid RV and one minute later there's this bright flash and this loud boom nearby. So I uh, am happy I shut off the AC power. So I got my monitor off. My laptop is processing the latest video which will be live for tomorrow morning. Actually, it's not the latest video, but it's still the latest one I'm working on. And that's that's on battery. It's running on its own batteries right now. With the AC off, it runs on its battery power, which is fine. I've got a DC set of LED lights in here, which really brightens it up here. 
one set of LED lights really makes a huge difference. Look at that. Very nice. So I sit here with no AC power uh, waiting for yet another thunderstorm to pass. We have had thunderstorms every day or threat of thunderstorms every day except for Sunday in the last 10 days. That is so weird and I keep looking at the weather radar and we have wave after wave after wave of rain coming this way. But it's the oddest weather right now. It's not usual to have this much rain this uh, late in the season. So I'll wait for the thunder pet to pass. Of course it's not going to do it now that I'm recording. That was a massive bang when I picked up my camera. So anyway, I have to sit here and wait. I um, hope you can hear that. I would like to head off some things at the pass. A lot of people are discussing my living situation, whether I sleep in the RV or not, about whether I, ha I have worked out the deal with the landlady or not, whether I've worked out the thing with the boards or not. Um, where I lay my head from now on is private. What I've done with paperwork and the boards and whatever else and what contracts I have with whoever or wherever is going to be private. Um, I can say one thing, you won't ever see me here in the RV in evening videos. Uh, well, evening, yes. I mean, this is my office. This is where I work. But you'll notice there's no nighttime stuff anymore. So I don't know if that tells you anything at all or not. But the point is, uh, a lot of people are wondering and theorizing about my situation here. And I just have to say I'm very sorry. I won't discuss my personal life anymore because of the attacks on my landlady. When certain people decide it's time to attack an elderly landlady to get me in trouble, then I decide to clam up about my life. I will continue doing videos about the off-grid project and the off-grid dark RV at this time. But no more discussion about paperwork. I'm not going to tell you about how the tiny home is able to be done or why. I'm sorry. I Other people can probably give you that information, but I can't. Because I have enemies looking for anything and everything I do. Even if it's legal and allowed and fine, they try to mess it up. So, I'm sorry, but that has to be. And uh, just a little reminder, because I see a lot of people asking, so please forgive me, but... You can thank the trolls. Well, I guess this has to be shown because there's a lot of talk about it. it seems like recently I've been talking about a lot of talk about me. Um, I am doing my taxes. So, the people out there who are interested in turning me in for not filing my taxes, well, guess what? You can't. So, anyway, it's raining a lot, and this is what I do, well, part of what I do sometimes on rainy days. <laughs>